Good morning. Uh, so welcome to the first of the July drawing and painting projects, which uh, the first one is going to be very much about colour. Uh, I've got some fruit and vegetable, still life objects to start with, some towels which are going to be my background, because I want to just illustrate in a fairly simple way some of the principles. The principles of a limited palette, which means not so much that you have fewer colours if you like, put out onto your palette, but that within the image there are fewer colours. You try and eliminate um, uh, 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 unnecessary, excessive colours, if you like, in order to produce a much more intense uh, and harmonious um, colour composition. So I'm going to start with the simple objects and some and do some drawings and talk you through the principle uh, and then move on to more complex subject matter, interiors and so on. Uh, possibly propose you might want to work with figures, if that's your interest. But I'm aware that some of you will um, be drawing and will stay with drawing, and you might be quite happy to stay with relatively simple subject matter uh, as you draw. Others will move on into painting and more complex material. So um, you can discuss those different possibilities and how you want to progress with me um, during the week. So I'm going to set out some of these objects and just talk you through um, the principles, the ideas uh, that I um, are having with the colours that I'm working with, and then I'll, I'll do some quick studies uh, and um, guide you in how I think you need to get started. So I'll pause while I set out a few possibilities. So to start with, I'm keeping things simple. A couple of lemons, I've put them onto the pale blue towel. That seems to be, I don't know, a fairly attractive prospect. Those colours, to my eye, uh, are quite attractive, quite harmonious. But as with, with many subject matters, rather than diving into a drawing, I think it's really good just to explore different possibilities. Um, if I put those two onto something different, like this darker blue. What do I get there? There's always a slight um, challenge with colour in that hopefully, firstly, via the camera, the phone, you're seeing more or less what I'm seeing. But also, we, I think we all experience, it is the fact that we experience colour differently, so there'll be colours and colour combinations that excite me, that leave you cold. Um, so we've got, to, we've got to deal with that as well. But actually, I prefer that combination. Why? I think probably as well as the yellow and blue having a kind of contrasting um, effect, the blue making the yellow look a bit more vivid or the vi yellow making the blue look more vivid. Because it's a darker blue, um, it seems to go better to my eye. So between those two, if I were to make a drawing, um, I think I would... Um, go for the darker blue. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I have taken a piece of A4 grey paper, which uh, I suggest I'm going to be working in, in pastel um, to um, explore these colours. You might want to work in other materials, certainly you want to work in colour, because it's all about colour, but you could perhaps use um, a, a watercolour or I'm going to use pastel, and I think pastel on grey paper is a good way to explore colour because it helps you see colour a bit better. When you work on white, it can take quite a while before you, the colours start to affect each other, whereas on the grey paper they're affecting each other almost instantly. So I've folded my A4 paper into four because I'm going to do four different studies um, as part of this process of exploring the subject matter. I'll go through this first drawing, I'll demonstrate it, and then the others I'll just show you what I've produced. Um, so I'm going to use, do the usual pastel thing of drawing a little bit with charcoal. And uh, getting out some shapes for my lemons, looking with my eyes half closed, and filling in a little bit of um, tone smudging it a bit. Now these are 
small studies and the purpose of them really is to give me some choice uh, and a chance to assess these color combinations to decide what worked best, what I like, and in a way, ideally be able to say why I like them. So I've got some kind of understanding of the what's going on with color. And in terms of the project uh, and the conversations I'll have with uh, each of you, again, it's it's a it's a good excuse to talk about color. So I can I can talk about bright colors, neutral colors, contrasting colors, and I can you know qualify those terms um, with reference to quite specific things that you're seeing. So I've done something tonal. I could spray that, but I'm just going to work straight into it. Um, get a bit of yellow for this lemon, and you can see you'll remember this with pastel that. Uh, if I put it um, on the clean paper, I'll get a nice clean colour. Then I can work it over the charcoal, perhaps a little bit more lightly, and then I get a darker yellow. So that's just quite, quite handy for these quick studies. This is the lovely thing about pastel, that you can get quite quick results. And if this is part of a process of deciding what, what will be my colour, palette or my, the, my subject matter for this limited palette, then that's, uh, that's a, good, a good speedy way to work. And again, keeping it small, you can quite quickly get an idea of, of what's on offer. I think it's probably also fairly important to try and get the colours that are in front of you. <laughs> um, for example, that blue, it's quite hard to get dark blues um, in some of these pastel sets. So I want to work a little bit with, I might, I might grey that slightly. So I am doing a bit of, whilst wanting to do a quick study, I am trying to be fairly uh, thoughtful about the colours. Because if I'm going to come to some sort of conclusion about what colours work best with my limited palette, then um, I want to feel I'm being fairly faithful. Bring a bit of white there for the light. Being fairly faithful about the colours in my studies. So I've demonstrated that just to give you a feel for um, how you might actually tackle any particular study. Uh, but equally, I think in, at this first stage, I want you to have an experience of colour and us to be able to discuss colour. So what actually happens with uh, arranging your objects and um, making choices between different possibilities uh, is just as important. So I'll pause while... Um, I move on. So how about this? I've um, put out my carrots there. How did they look? Um, I was keen on the contrast between the lighter yellow lemons and the darker blue. Um, the orange of the carrots, I think, certainly contrasts with the blue. I would say in a way there's a bit of a competition here between, ra rather than the, it's very silly talking about lemons and carrots, but rather than the yellows and the oranges um, working together, I think they're kind of competing. Um, let's try something different. Let's put them onto this lighter blue. It's lighter compared with the last towel. This is more of a greener blue. They look quite good on there. That's okay. Um, I think that's slightly better to my eye. Uh, why? Because I think rather than there being, rather than the dark blue bringing out 
either the yellow or the orange, I think this is slightly less of a contrast. Uh, so rather than these yellows and oranges competing, uh, they're a little bit more in harmony. I don't know if, if you'll have the same experience, but what I'll do is I'll pause while I do a drawing of that and then show you it, and then I'll try another variation. So this is what I've produced. These, these are a quarter of A4, so they're small, and I think that's a, a useful thing to work with initially. I can't get into much detail. I'm interested in colour rather than drawing the perfect lemon or the perfect carrot. It's much more um, giving me an experience of the colour, and I think it is really valuable actually to work with pastel and charcoal because with pastels, you can put down some clean, fresh colour. There are parts of the carrot where I can put a clean orange on. But you can also mix it with the charcoal to darken it, to dull it. So these points that I was making in the email about the idea of working with bright colour or neutral colour, greys, browns, uh, off-whites and so on, by mixing pastel or using the pastel clean, you can actually work with those types of colour and therefore be able to think about what's the balance of bright colours, neutral colours, um, what's kind of harmony is there uh, in your choice of colours. So that's two there. Um, so I've already got something to choose from. Uh, I think this is simpler. There's only uh, two colours there. Um, I want to try one more. Uh, which would be to let's take away our orange models and try these. Um, I think, I mean, I've been rehearsing this, of course, but I think there's a lot more uh, potential here. And why is that? I think partly actually because these colours are very closely related. So I don't know, how well, again, how well it's coming out for you on the screen, but this is a, a green-blue. It's virtually a pale green. It's quite a cool green. It's a, a bit sort of minty. Uh, and then we've got green leeks, and we've got a, a, a greeny yellow, really. The lemon uh, lemons are not so much an orangey yellow but um, going more towards greens. So these colours actually are very closely related. And I'm hopeful that they would make a fine combination for that reason, that effectively it's a much more limited palette. So let me just produce that in person. Whoops, I might have paused at the wrong time there. Anyway, I'm doing this, just giving you a quick time lapse with some silly gaps.
So that's more or less what I might do to a little study like that. So this, this whole process thus far has been very much about trying to get you to think in terms of the colours in your subjects and being able to, in a way, manipulate them, uh, choose colours that you think work together well, um, leave out or swap colours that don't fit. I mean, of the three, I, I was quite keen on this just because it's such a limited colour, but as it happens, the orange carrots are quite attractive and they possibly work better there than they would have done on the dark blue. I think that's what I tried to illustrate. So as with any process of, of composition, this is colour composition really, um, I think if you have things to choose from, options as it were, that's the way to go. Rather than settle on the first thing you see, um, if you can do some quick studies of one or two possibilities, then at least you can choose this over that. And maybe all three of them would be perfectly fine things to develop. But um, this is a process by which you can choose something which you think is going to be stronger. So that was to demonstrate the principles. I'm now going to explore one or two other subjects um, around the house. So rather than having to set up still lives or um, subject matter, you might just wander around your house. Um, cupboards and shelves can be quite a good idea. A sort of um, accidental, uh, unconscious still life. So I, I, looking at this shelf, uh, nice blues in the cups and everything. I think these, I don't think these cups fit. I don't think that red goes. What in a way it, we could do with is, um, I don't know, I think a bit of orange. This, I haven't just to find that tea towel there. Uh, but I don't know, there's a lot of white. There's a lot of white and cream and, um, doesn't quite work for me. There's, but I should explain that. So there's not, there's maybe not enough colour there. I, I, I did point out and keep trying to stress the idea of limited palette doesn't mean not much colour. It can mean, well, all right, put it differently. It doesn't mean not colourful. Uh, some of those images I sent you, the Degas and the Matisse and the Uglo, they were very colourful, but there weren't many colours. So I'm rejecting this in spite of the accidental tea towel because it's, it's, it's not colourful enough. And I wondered about the larder. It's funny, actually, the colour is not coming out very well. We've got lots of Heinz, Heinz baked bean tins there, but they don't look... They don't look the right sort of green to me. But if I was working with this, you know, what would I do? Could I just rearrange a few things? It's funny, the colour really isn't coming out right at all on screen. Uh, so I wish I hadn't done this now. Uh, but if I were to do it, you know, a cupboard, as I say, is quite a good place to start a cupboard or a shelf. But what you would be doing is rearranging it, manipulating it, as it were, to limit your colours. But let's move on. That was a bad idea. So for those who might be keen to work on a more complex subject than just the still life objects, um, I thought I would have a look now at a, an interior. So we've got this lovely red tiled fireplace and there's a red rug on the floor. So. Thinking about some of those images by Matisse that I attached to the email, um, I can see some potential here um, to work with these various bits of architecture, furniture, objects in the room. So I'm going to do another quick demonstration. This time, I think for me, it would be too challenging to get all of that into a quarter of A4. So I'm going down to half of A4, A5. Um, it's been useful for me actually using the phone as a, you know, the, the camera as a way of finding some compositions. So you might make yourselves a 
viewfinder, a little rectangle to look through, or you might even wander around with a camera or a phone camera to just look for some possibilities. Um, but I, as I say, to half of A4 is probably small enough. And what do I want in my composition? I want some of that red um, tiled fireplace. So maybe this is where that fireplace is going to be. Let me see that okay. But I also want a bit of red carpet. So it's got to be all got to fit in there. Got a bit of red carpet down there. And I'm going to have the kilted dummy over here. And the metal piece there. So you know, as as usual, it's it's tough getting these big shapes onto quite a small area. Working with the charcoal is a good place to start. I put the music stand there because I thought a bit of light would be nice. Uh, I'm going to have a bit of perspective as well, so that might be a little bit more horizontal. So that's how I'm going to begin, but... Um, so let me pause while I just do a little bit more drawing, and then I'll talk about colours, really, and about including and eliminating colours. Uh, oh no, not while I'm working. It mustn't be too noisy, please. <laughs> yeah, well, don't be like that. <laughs> I'm recording. Hello, yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm nearly done. I'm still still recording. Well, I'm not recording at the moment, but I'm still yeah. still making my video. 
Everything all right over there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very well. Good. Oh, that's good. Right, I seem to have been filming again. <laughs> well, it's not showing you anything. Oh golly, what what have I recorded? So I'd better explain this quickly. So I've been just pause. Okay, right. So, um, so I've been working on that. I've been adjusting colours, trying to remember that what I'm doing is limiting colour here, and it was all about the red fireplace and the red carpet and maybe the red kilt. <laughs> 
Um, so there's things I've left out, there's colors I've left out. And if I put them in, they would have competed with these colors. So, you know, I eliminate them or I play them down. So I'm really balancing these different reds with the various neutrals, the grays, the browns, um, and the creams, whites, and so on. So I might go on and paint that. Uh, you might go on and paint something like it if you want to work with an interior. You might be interested in working with a figure, but hopefully I've explained some of the principles. I think by starting with a pastel study and keeping it small, you can experience making colors brighter, toning them down, leaving them out. For example, here I got a little bit of orange into the kilt just to really make that stand out but I mix red back into it so that it stayed, if you like, within the red range and uh, didn't become too much of a new colour, which might have you know, expanded my colour range too much and I would have lost the sort of strength of the limited palette approach. So um, it's over to you now, really. Um, you'll see this on Sunday morning and when we'll have a get together on Sunday evening and when we do the Zoom meeting, it'd be great if you had one little study that you could show um, and to illustrate what you're thinking of working with during the week. And as I say, I'd be more than happy if some of you just want to draw and spend all week exploring different colour combinations and we can have the discussions about colour theory opposite colours, bright colours, neutral colours. Um, and we can also have the conversation really about what, a, you know, what your taste in colour is, because we'll see and experience colour in slightly different ways. But we can certainly use the language of colour and colour theory and I think make some progress in that way. Uh, so you might just draw or you might uh, eventually find something you want to paint or spend longer on a more sustained drawing of. Okay, well, good luck.